I want to greet you today in the name of the lovely Lord Jesus Christ to the city elders of the Tulsa metropolitan area across the state of Oklahoma and beyond. You know, when I say I greet you in the name, I take that very seriously. That means in the place of, in the stead of, for his sake and speaking for him. That's why we want to convey the heart and the mind of God in these updates. We want to communicate the heart of the Lord. Now, I've got a great word. I mean a great word for you and very important announcements. This is a very important day, and I'll tell you why in just a moment, so stay tuned. First of all, I want to share with you, in the Gospel of John, in every chapter, uh, there are portraits of the Lord Jesus. In chapter 1, he's the Son of God, Son of Man, Divine Teacher, etc., Bread of Life, Water of Life, Light of the World, etc. In John chapter 15, he said, I am the true vine, and my father's the husbandman. In verse 5, he says, I'm the true vine, and you are the branches. Now, the ultimate purpose of this passage, Jesus said, is he wants us to experience abundant joy. And that joy is the result of bearing fruit. There's three stages, fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. And he said, I want you to bear much fruit, and I want you to have abundant joy. Now, that joy is the result of this status, this state of being of abiding. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. What is this abiding? It means to dwell, to stay in a constant state of union. Now, that union is very unique. It's a reciprocal union. It's a vital union of us in Christ that when we are born again, God's divine spirit joins together with our human spirit and we are born again. We are recreated. We are regenerated to become a brand new creation. Now, the beauty of this is Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. You are dependent upon me as the source of life. I am the source, but I am dependent upon you for expression in the world. You see, we're, we're dependent upon him because his life-giving spirit joined with our spirit is the means by which we live. Eternal life is the result of our spirit being illuminated, regenerated, made alive as God's spirit joins with our spirit as a result of the atonement. The blood of Jesus brings reconciliation and regeneration, and we're born again. And now, our life source is in this state of abiding. Now, I could talk about this for quite a while. It's such an important subject, learning how to abide. Now, the adversary's objective is to destabilize our status, our status, our, he, he wants us to be destabilized. He wants us to have fear or anxiety uh, or doubt or dread. Anything to cause us to question or to have anxiety. And so God wants us in a state of peace. He wants us in a state of joy. As a matter of fact, two-thirds of the definition of the kingdom of God is peace and joy. Think about that for just a moment. The kingdom of God, Paul said, is righteousness, our standing, and peace and joy. Our emotional and spiritual state. Our one is our standing. Righteousness is a legal term. It means in proper standing, in judicial standing, in right legal standing, relational standing. We're righteous. But the product of that, the fruit of that is peace and joy. Now, don't forget that because we have to be aware of our state. Guard your heart. 
Don't let the adversary through a storm or adversity or an adversary cause you to lose your peace. And here's why. Because in that state of peace and joy, you are resourceful. You are allowing the life-giving flow of the Holy Spirit to operate. If you're in fear, the Spirit of God will, will not operate in fear or dread or anxiety or frustration. No, it's in the state of peace. It's in that peace that you're resourceful because your mind is, is oper operable and, and sensitive to your spirit and God's Holy Spirit. And so it's so important. He's the vine, you're the branches, and he's dependent upon us for the expression of his divine life. The fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the life of God flowing through us. You know, Jesus always had such a poise, such an, an acquiescence. You couldn't rattle him. You couldn't cause him to fear or, uh, or to, to uh, have anxiety. Why? He was in a continual state of of abiding in fellowship with the Father, unbroken fellowship. And you can do that. You can do that laying your head on the pillow. You can do it walking. You, I'm doing it right now. I'm in communion and fellowship. My spirit is in union and energized by the life-giving spirit of God's Holy Spirit. Well, I'm already over time. But to think about that, meditating. You, how do you abide? He said, if my words abide in you. If you abide my word and my words abide in you. There's several steps. Go through John 15. It's wonderful on how to abide. Whatsoever you ask in my name. If you're abiding, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. Now, asking in his name again is for his sake, in his place, praying what he would pray. Representing him as his life-giving expression in the earth. Oh, John 15. It, it'll be a blessing to you. All right, well, why is this an important day? Because tomorrow is primary election day. Now, we've got some very important election, the mayor's election and, and city council and representatives and senators and commissioners. And we have had most of those individuals whom you need to vote for, almost all of them, in front of you at city elders. And so um, if you don't know on the state elections, go to iVoter guide.com. Now, we've made the determination that we're going to start putting out a voter guide. And this is why, because oftentimes voter guides go out without the proper investigation, the proper questions being asked. We're going to start putting out an iVoter guide of our own, where we will interview with the right questions, determining where people stand on the issues, and we will start putting that out across the state of Oklahoma, and eventually beyond, of course. So, secondly, there are many church events that are taking place in the Metroplex. And if you are a participant, if you are a member of City Elders, if you regularly attend City Elders, uh, if your pastor is participating with City Elders, we will put your event in our weekly update. Now, that weekly update goes out to multiplied thousands of recipients. And so it'll be a blessing to all of the churches that put their event in there. So keep that in mind. Now, thirdly, our monthly banquet with United States Attorney General, former United States Attorney General, John Ashcroft, is coming up uh, September the 5th at 6.30 p.m. at the Embassy Church. Dr. Paula Price has made the banquet hall available to us with her grace, and we thank her and the congregation of the mighty there for that. And that is 7100 East 31st Street between Sheridan and Memorial on 31st Street. Easy to find. Many of you have been there. So don't forget to get registered. We, we have a capacity of 320 seats. The last time we had John, I think we had four or 500 people. So you're going to want to get registered right away or you won't get a seat. Okay. Now, I've got just a few seconds here left. Uh, if Christians do not engage in the political process, judgments, laws, policies will be adopted by people who do not believe in God nor honor his word. Secondly, Plato 
said, if you don't take an interest in the affairs of your government, then you are doomed to live under the rule of fools. Samuel Adams said, let each citizen remember at the moment he's offering his vote that he is executing one of the most solemn trusts in human society for which he is accountable to God and his country. So I know most of you, or possibly all of you that are watching this uh, and stay up to date with city elders, you are engaged you're engaged in the issues, you're engaged in the process, you're registered, and you will vote. So don't forget to vote tomorrow, the 27th, and this Thursday is, is a fifth Sunday, I'm sorry, is a fifth Thursday, and we are having a special core four for all of our task force groups. So point person, leader, chairman of each task group, make sure your core four is present because we will have a special leadership meeting after the general session on Thursday, the 29th. And uh, we're also going to have a fellowship meal. There'll be refreshments, so sandwiches, etc. And we're just going to have a great time casting vision, moving the mission forward, because the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. Don't forget to go to cityelders.com and get registered for September 5th banquet with uh, United States Attorney General John Ashcroft. And I hope to see you this Thursday, particularly all Core 4 members. Love you. Bye. Join the movement. Change the world. cityelders.com